Gracias por esta oportunidad para hablar con ustedes, um, porque mi español es un poco malo. Quiero hablar en inglés y lo siento. It's exciting for me to return to Chile for part of the model that I'm going to tell you about that supports entrepreneurs actually started here in Chile in 2003. I am the, the founding partner of a, of a technology incubator called Tech Branch Austin. Tech Branch Austin is a model where we work at the earliest stages with technology entrepreneurs, many times before anyone else like angel investors or other programs will engage with them. We're going to talk a little bit about the background about that and how it's changing the world. First off, a little bit of background information so you have a context about myself. Um, I've been involved in seven tech startups. The last five, I actually was either the founder or on the, uh, one of the founding team members. Earlier in my career, I got to work for Steve Jobs at a company called Next. And this whole notion of working and changing the world, Steve actually had this amazing way of truly believing that a group of us could change the world. Because of this, it was my belief that entrepreneurship and technology are two of the most disruptive forces that can be used for good in the world. Yet, in 2003, I found that there was a problem. My friend Danielle, that we see here in, her, uh, in this picture with, with her son, killed herself. She committed suicide. It threw me into a very difficult part of my time and in my life because the question was, how is it possible that I live in a world that we can change so many things through technology and entrepreneurship, yet there's this type of suffering that someone would take her, her life by her own hand? And how is it possible that with all we can create, all the opportunities we can create, an opportunity was not created for her? I had to look beyond my ideas of just technology and just entrepreneurship. I couldn't just start one more technology startup. I had to do something that would fundamentally change the way these organizations work together. Now, I do believe that technology startups have the tools to change the world. Being a, uh, a student of Steve Jobs and in my career, and having the opportunity to make so many fundamental changes with, with my career in things like that, I, I have no question that that at least, at least is a component part. But the difficulty is I think we do not have enough entrepreneurs driving enough technology startups to really do what is truly possible, even with just this group of people in just this room. The enemy of what is stopping us in its most simplest terms, we call the Venture Valley of Death. The Venture Valley of Death is responsible for killing more startups than anything else. Many, um, many times business people say, well, really it's competition or something else. But the truth be told, it's you, when an entrepreneur launches a venture and bleeds all the way through this first part, bleeds cash flow out, many times not having opportunities for funding until this point in the history, of, of the venture. We have to figure out ways of helping those entrepreneurs get across the venture valley of death. And so I set out to look for what are the key models that can actually make a difference. I, over the last eight years, I've traveled all over the world, including North and South America, many different locations here in Chile, as well as other parts of, of the world, to look what were the effective models and what could I take from different places to put together a more powerful model? Now, the model that I came up with, I call enterprise teaming. The idea is it's about enterprise, which I, about business. It's about business, but it's about teaming up together. That is, we're working together in, just like in olden times. So if I was a farmer and you were a farmer, I'd help you build your barn, you'd help me build my barn. It's because we worked together that things happened. First example actually comes, though, first insight actually comes from the fact that I actually have studied Japanese martial arts for the last 20 years. And 15, for the last 15 years, I studied a martial art called Aikido. Now, Aikido is a peaceful martial art. The idea, there are many different ideas I could tell you about it, but for the purposes of, of to give you a little bit of insight on what I think 
we need to take out of that field into technology entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship in general is that we don't need general knowledge. We need specific knowledge, knowledge that enables action. Entrepreneurs do not need to be academics. We don't need to go and have long degree programs and things like that. Sometimes we need the knowledge of what's right in front of us. In this case, as I'm being thrown, my arm is being put in a position right here, and it's so it's very valuable, so my arm does not get broken, that I know how to fly over. That knowledge right at the right time in my company's history is the type of knowledge that we need to be able to present to entrepreneurs. Second insight, there are many different contests out there that support entrepreneurs. They'll take uh, 500 applications, and then out of the top five, select five. That is a perfectly valid model of working with startups. It's a perfectly valid model of working with entrepreneurs. Yet the difficulty is, what happens to the other 495 entrepreneurs? What happens to them? They didn't win. What do we do with them? In Aikido, the martial art that I practice, there are no competitions. I don't have to beat you and you don't have to beat me. It's because we're working together that we all get better. We all get better all the way through the process. It's not just about the top five of the winners. The problem with a lot of the contest is because we have a contest that it, it puts each one of us in competition, in a competition that actually is not true. I'm in one type of business, you're in a different type of business, we're not competitive. So if we look beyond the competitions and look for another model, and actually perhaps complement the competitions with this model, you and I can work together and get stronger no matter what. Now maybe one of us does go off to a competition, but that's okay. Because both of us working together can become stronger. Just like in Aikido, any student that steps onto the Aikido mat practices, 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 can become significantly better over a period of time. The, the third insight actually comes from open source software. Now open source software, there's a, you know, as we heard earlier, there is a piece of software that share, where knowledge is shared across the software. The platform itself is part of the knowledge that is shared with others. Same type of thing. I, we call it inside of enterprise teaming, we call it an attention commons. An attention commons, that is where all of us are paying attention to what's needed. For as an example, five minutes of your time in the course of my startup's history could be extremely valuable. Or five minutes of your insight, your marketing insight in your technology startup's history, five minutes of time at the right time is extremely valuable. It's just a matter of finding out how can we take the knowledge of the crowd, the, the wisdom of the crowd, to find those connections. And the fourth insight in doing this research and actually building these type of models is let's not use financial capital, let's use social capital. Many of us in this room don't have much financial capital, but we all have the ability to create social capital that is working arm in arm with each other. This is how many of our communities were founded. As, as this metaphor implies, back when I was saying earlier about one farmer working with another farmer, it's, this is what brought our communities together. But many times in the context of technology startups, this is forgotten. It's forgotten that, wait, we could work together. No, we're not competitive. You know, or maybe you have, or even if we are competitive, in fact, one of the biggest insights if you look at some of the places in Silicon Valley is even when there are competitive areas where there's a large density of entrepreneurs working side by side, even if they're competitive, a lot of times in the Bay Area, they'll actually work together. In my hometown of Austin, we see the same thing, that competitors, competitors are working side by side because it ends up creating a bitter, bigger outcome because there's more than enough teams around the world that are in competition with you. Competition is real. But through using social capital, we can create outcomes that are not possible if we do not have financial, um, financial capital. And moreover, we can get started much earlier in the venture valley of death at a time where investors aren't going to touch the startup that we're working on. So what are the results thus far? I want to tell you about a few examples about how this model is actually taking off. 
First off, in, in Austin, a group of us bound together years ago in 2003 and actually started changing Austin. If you knew about my hometown, you know, there's been many articles in the papers and, and magazines that say Austin's the best place or one of the best places on the planet to start a company. It's a very exciting place to start companies, but I can tell you it wasn't always this way. And I can tell you one of the most powerful forces that was used, that we used, to create Austin into a more powerful place to start startups was we self-organized and created a group called Bootstrap Austin. Now this is a picture of um, my, one of my buddies, um, one of my comrades in arms, who actually, working together, we actually started Bootstrap Austin. But the key secret was what we started, many other people came to, and it was because of the volume of people, over 700 entrepreneurs, that the power of what's there um, was possible. Secondly, I took the same model and created an incubator out of it. This is the Tech Ranch Austin. Um, in the Tech Ranch, we've now worked with over 300 entrepreneurs directly, and we have, we're quite proud of the fact that many times when entrepreneurs, or 25% of the time when entrepreneurs go through our Venture Forth program, they're getting to first dollars earned during the course of the program, and not, not consulting dollars, product dollars earned during the course of the program. The, the notion of using social capital, a lot of times when you don't have financial capital is what makes this possible. We've actually started building a, you know, build, well we just recently moved into this building so that we could actually take this to an even higher level than before. But I'd like to tell you one more thing on how we're actually using this model in a whole different way. And this is exciting. This is where things are starting to very, very much accelerate. A lot of my career has been building Skunk Works. A Skunk Works is is a startup of sorts in a larger company where actually we need to do disruptive innovation in the larger company. For myself, as an example, when Dell Computer Corporated, a corporation wanted to go into e-commerce years ago, they hired my little two-person firm to help them build the software that sold the first $2 billion with the computers. And I, by the way, I built that in my living room, but the whole idea behind this is, this is a skunk works. A lot of times, large corporations can't innovate fast enough, so there's this opportunity to start with startups outside of the corporation. In 2009 and 2010, I actually used this model with a Global 100 company. Now, the, pro the process was so powerful that the Global 100 company doesn't want me to tell you their name. They had looked at a project and examined that it was gonna take three and a half years to take advantage of this one market opportunity. But they estimated that three and a half years from now, the market was gonna start closing. They said, we can't do this. But they gave us a call and said, oh, is it possible you could do something else with this, this skunk works slash enterprise teaming model that you have? What we did was, around the tech creates, we took three different startups. The first one had software that could be repurposed from B to B, I mean B to C to B to B. The second one had subject matter expertise in the field that this company is in or is doing business in. The third one had intellectual property protection, had IP protection for protecting what was built. We didn't collapse the companies together, we actually kept them as separate units. But within six months, this format was able to deliver an application that two months later was cash flowing to millions of dollars for the Global 100 company. Unheard of productivity, and it's because entrepreneurs know how to move very fast, very cash efficiently, whereas the, the large company actually had, a, the Global 100 company had certain needs that could be achieved if they could move fast. So what's coming very soon? Well, one of the exciting things about being back in Chile is we are starting a group in Antofagasta, in the region of Antofagasta, called Atacama Siete. Atacama Siete will be using the similar type of model that Bootstrap Austin is, where we're doing peer-to-peer, entrepreneur-to-entrepreneur support to help transform Atacama and Antofagasta in general, the region of Antofagasta, by having entrepreneurs that are able to find each other and work with each other and create social capital we'll be able to transform what's happening in, in that part of the world. 
And secondly, we're taking this beyond that with a project called Region Fertil. The Region Fertil pro project will be taking the entrepreneurs that are in Atacama Siete and working with industry, of course, working with the mining industry and other um, industry that's uh, in, in Antofagasta for making it possible that entrepreneurs will have opportunities that they wouldn't have otherwise. Compare using these guys' skills to move quickly for problem sets that the large organizations have. And it's time for this. This, uh, this curve right here says the current employment recession. It's, these are all the different recessions that have happened since um, World War II. Now note that it's sloped down faster and it's flatter than any of the other recessions since World War II. Uh, this is happening in my country in the United States, but it's affecting the whole world. And we see a lot of uncertainty. I don't care what the politics is, you can be on the right or the left, but the only people that are prepared to solve this problem and the only people that are capable of solving this problem are the entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurs, we have a lot to do. Moreover, we need to support our entrepreneurs. If we can support them, this problem and all the other world problems that we have can be solved. Moreover, let's do it together. You know, as in uh, olden times, when there was a new territory to pioneer to, we did it together. This myth that there's a standalone entrepreneur that can change the world, just him or herself, is not true. It's when the community comes together, supports their entrepreneurs, collaborates, that we actually create opportunities that wouldn't be there otherwise. We're building a worldwide network of entrepreneurs to do this type of work together. And I'm excited to say that we're starting here, taking the model that I started in Chile and in Austin and taking it to Antofagasta. And I'm excited to see where we'll be able to take it from here. Thank you for your time.